Let's do some practice. Remember at each question to pause it and try first because you'll learn a lot more out of this if you've had a go before you see how I did it. So this first question here, remember divided by means over. So my first thing I will do, and if this is what's written in my textbook, I'm going to copy it down like this because this is how I want to look at divided by. I want to look at them like my little spearfishing idea. Now I can see straight away those M's can go and I can look at 24 and I know the 24 divides by 6 and has 4 behind so I can actually without writing everything out I can just leave a 4 behind on top because that's where I lost it and actually that's all I'm left with for an answer. Over here again I will rewrite my question as an over and I might have to go this way. Normally I like to work down the page but I'll work across because I didn't leave enough room. Uh, Okay, so with five of them sitting on top and three sitting on the bottom, I know I can cancel three pairs. Whatever the smaller number is with the same letter base, uh, I can actually cancel. So three pairs can go, which means three of the five go, leaving me with two behind. And then with the six and the nine, I can divide both of them by three, and I'm left with two here, and I'm left with three here. And then, of course, I just have to be able to have been neat enough to read what I wrote. And there's my answer. start making it an over and then we look at this and go oh there's a pair of x's there with four on top so I can lose the pair I got a smaller number of y's on top than the bottom so I lose my pair of y's here and I'm left with three there 12 does divide by four and leaves me with three behind so I just leave something behind on top 3x squared on y cubed this one's already in fraction form so I'm ready to go. I can just start spearing straight up. I've got a squared. That's smaller, so I lose the cubed. I'm left with the a. I'm not going to write a 1 in. There's a b here, and there's four of them here. So lose that 1 and left 3 behind. Now I cancel the 4 here with the 8, because 4 goes into 8 twice. Now interestingly, nothing has been left over on top. Now, I know that I have this on the bottom. On top, when I've been cancelling for dividing, I'm never actually left with nothing. What I am left with is 1. If I don't put a 1 on top of that lid here, I'm not going to be able to hold this number down to the bottom. So if I just wrote my answer as 2ab cubed, it would be incorrect because it's got to go on the bottom. Remember that 2 is not the same as a half. So if you just write down your leftover numbers without keeping them on the bottom, then you're going to be writing different things. This gets confusing because a lot of students do understand that 2 on 1 is the same as 2. So when the, there's nothing left over on the bottom, I can't say nothing, there was a 1 left over on the bottom over here. When I divided everything out, I was actually left with a 1. But I don't bother to write it in because I know that 4 on 1 is the same as 4, the same way that 2 on 1. If I divide something by 1, I get itself. So the one on the bottom never gets written in, but the one on the top has to be written in. Finishing off over here. I take the two, divide it out of the six, leave three. I got nine here and 15 here. So this is where you really don't want to be writing it out 15 times and writing it out nine times. But you could see that if you'd done that, if you think about it, you could cancel nine pairs. So I cancel nine pairs because there's less there. And the white of the six was left on top. So that's where I leave it. That's an eight. Six goes into 12 twice. So that's the cancelling those factors. Five on the bottom, eight on the top. Leave me with three on the top once I've cancelled them all out. Now I know you're not actually seeing me spearfishing here, but I want you to be still thinking about the spearfishing as you go because that's what's going to help you when we add more different types of algebra problems, you've got to go, how did I handle this? What am I thinking about? I'm thinking about the fact that 63 is 7 nines. So if I cancel the 7s, I'd be left with the 9s. I'm thinking about there being 7 x's here and 4 of them sitting side by side here. Spear out 4 pairs. Negative 9. 
x to the 3. The fact that there was a negative number there just carried into a negative number onto this top of the fraction and just carried along. Minuses, when we're timesing and dividing, all they do is hang around, and if there's two of them, they cancel each other out. Over here, again, my action is divide, not minusing, because there's a divide sitting first. So, Now I've got negatives appearing twice, and like I was saying before, they cancel each other. They're a bit like matching fish. So you go, yep, get rid of those guys. They're gone. There's an x and an x squared, so I could lose the x from the bottom and one of them from the top. There's a y and a y. I can lose them. Uh, there's nothing to cancel with the z. And 8 and 12 both divide by 4. So I could pull a 4 out and leave a 2 behind here and a 3 behind here. There we go.